Welcome back to Chem 102 Lab at California State University, Northridge. Today we'll be looking at experiment one, making iron and copper complexes with oxalate. So, first what we'll do today is we're going to demonstrate how to use a stir bar on the stir plate. You'll notice that that stir plate looks just like a hot plate. It's because it is a hot plate with a stirring function. This will heat your solutions. This will stir your solutions. The reason we want to stir our solutions is so that when they're heating, they won't bump. And you can always use the stirring, the stirring option without the heating option. So if you ever need anything mixed, you can always do this as well. So first we'll just fill some, a beaker with some water, just for demonstration purposes. And we're going to go ahead and put it on the hot plate. If you notice right now, we'll hit stir and nothing's happening. It's because our magic little stir bar is right here. And if we want to stir, let's turn this back down. You have to throw it in. Now how the stir bar works on the top plate is that there's a little metal rod in there. It's a little magnetic that spins when we want this to stir. So it only spins in one direction and it's in a fixed location in here. So if we have it off to the side, we won't be able to stir it properly. So once we have our stir bar inside our solution, we can turn it on the stir. And instead of looking at the numbers, what we want to look at is the solution. We want to be able to see a small vortex in our solution. And we want it to be spinning fast enough so that we can see a vortex and it's mixing, but not so fast that it's splashing. Because once it splashes, we start losing solution. And that's never good in an experiment. So that's how to use a stir bar with the hot plate. What I'll show you now is how to fold the filter paper. You'll want to get one large filter paper here. Uh, in the lecture, I'll show you where they are in the classroom. But you want one of these. And to fold it, we're going to fold it in half. So that makes a little half circle. We're going to fold it in half one more time to make a little quarter circle. Now that we have this, we just open one of these pockets. Fun. And we put it into our fun Oh, We're going to want to wet the sides of this so that it sticks down. You don't want too much air gap in here or else it's going to slow down the flow when you're trying to filter your stuff. And so now that it's all wet, your filter is ready to go for all your filtering needs. Next we're going to go and move over to the balances and I'll remind you how to use the balances and how to clean them up. This is your analytical balance. You've seen these already before in the 101 labs. So if you remember, you're going to put your weighing dish onto the balance and hit re-zero to tear the instrument. And when I mean tear, it means that you're taking account the mass of the weighing dish and it should read all zeros. So after you do this, both of these open, so you can stick your hand in there, you're going to weigh out however much of whatever compound that you need and you'll be all ready to go. Remember, if you take too much compound, you can't put it back into the bottle. We'll put it into a waste uh, dish next to it. And if by accident you end up spilling some of your compound, you're going to want to clean that up with a brush that is usually found next to the analytical balances. You'll just sweep it into this little waste container and you'll be all ready to go. Make sure that you clean these after you're done using them so that we can keep this lab nice and tidy. So because this is a two-day experiment, we're going to need to be able to set up a filter vacuum trap so that we can filter out our crystals after we've let them sit and let them grow. So what we do is we need a vacuum trap here and we need a Buchner funnel. Now inside the Buchner funnel, this top part is removable. 
So make sure that you weigh this before you do any of this so that when you have to weigh out your crystals for the mass, you can just stick all of this into the analytical balance. What you'll need to put in there is a small filter paper. Look at the size, small, so that it actually just sits right in to here. You don't have to fold it or anything, just set it right inside, put it back on, and that's ready to go. So to set up the vacuum trap, there are a few things you need to do. First, I recommend that you get a clasp and clamp so that you can hold this clasp down so that while you're vacuuming and letting it vacuum and dry, it won't move around, it won't tip over, you won't lose your crystals, you won't cry and be sad. Okay? How you connect all of this trap is first you'll want to connect this tubing coming out of this clasp into the vacuum line. Afterwards, you're going to take one of these two guys here, the one that's not capped preferably, I connect it to this clasp here. Once they're connected and everything's all good, you can go ahead and turn on the vacuum. Remember, it's on when it's pointing in the same direction that the tubing is going. If you turn it too far, it'll just turn off. So once you have it on, you can go ahead, we'll pretend that there are crystals in here, and you can just go ahead and pour it into your filter. Magic. After you do this, you're going to need to learn how to make an ice bath. It's pretty simple. It's a nice bath. So, you get a large beaker. You put some ice in it. And you put some water in it. Now the reason that we have to put some water in it is because we want to increase the surface area of the bath so that it cools your beaker nice and evenly. You can make a little hole in there and your beaker just sits right in there so that it can cool and you can make other crystals and it's all a good time. That's it for this video. We'll see you for experiment two.